We make a lot of choices in this life. Some are easy. We may not even be thinking about the fact that we are making a choice. And some are harder. When it comes to the choices that we struggle to make, I want to share with you a tool that I find very helpful. If we are not able to make up our minds about something, it is either because we simply cannot make up our minds, or maybe we have almost made up our minds, but still something inside of us tells us that the choice we are about to make may not be the right one. But no matter the circumstances, this tool works either way, so let's go. The choices you make, or perhaps don't make, are all based on you, your perspective, the person you are. Even if you, of course, may consider other people's opinions or feelings, in the end it is you who decides whether they should matter or not. This technique will offer you a perspective shift. You will be able to like jump out of yourself for a moment to get a fresh view on the situation. I have four questions that you can ask yourself when you're facing a hard decision. I usually ask myself one of these, the one that seemed the most fitting to the situation. But you can of course ask all four of them if you feel that that will give you the best guidance. The first question is, what would the goddess or god part of you do in this situation, or perhaps your higher self? By asking yourself this question, you are, like I said, shifting perspectives. And I have found that it is much easier to make a decision that feels good inside my heart when I do it like this. Like I said in the beginning, the choices we make are based on our experiences and expectations, and also very much so based on the way we feel about ourselves. And this part is extra important when it comes to the choices that has to do with boundaries. Because if we love ourselves, we probably don't have any issues with making choices that honor ourselves in this way. But if we instead lack self-love, it is very likely that we are prone to the opposite, being making decisions that doesn't honor our boundaries. Moving from a place where we lack self-love to a place where we fully and completely love ourselves won't happen overnight, but we can still make choices from this perspective. We can make choices that the version of ourselves who love themselves would make. And now it's getting extremely hot in here, so I had to turn on the fan, so excuse me for the background noise. Anyway, continuing. This brings us to the second question. What would the version of you who totally, completely and absolutely adores themselves do? I admit that taking action from this point of view might be hard if you doesn't feel this amount of love inside of you yet. But I still encourage you to do it because it is also a training in self-love. The third question is also helpful if you struggle with self-love or if you are a bit too close or too entangled in the situation to make a proper decision. The question is, if someone you truly care about were in your situation, facing the choice that you are facing, what would your advice to them be? I think this is a really good question. First of all, when it comes to the self-love part, or maybe the lack of self-love, I should say. When you shift perspectives and think about someone you love and the choices you would want for them, that's the choices you should make for yourself. Because you would want them to honor the beautiful soul that they are. And you are just as much as a beautiful soul. So you should just apply the advice you would give them onto yourself and then act on it. The fourth and the last question is simply, what choice will bring you the most joy? And there's no need to elaborate much further on that one, I believe, because the joy should always be followed.